He joins us now here on High Heat. And Kevin, you know what? The Braves, as you know better than anybody, were in first place for just eight days. But it doesn't matter because they are NL East champions. What do you make of the rise to the division crown? Resiliency, Alana, I think is what you can say about this team. Look, you go back to May and they were just not playing good baseball. They were a team that was, you know, four or five games under 500. Brian Snicker calls that team meeting in Arizona and all of a sudden this team just catches fire. Since June 1, they've been the best team in baseball and they've just chipped away and chipped away at that lead. It was a 10 and a half game lead for the Mets entering the month of June, but this team overcame a deficit last year and they knew exactly what they needed to do and I think that's the one thing a lot of this team has done such a great job of is staying in the moment they don't look too far behind they don't let a bad series affect them they just go on and they treat every game like it's its own entity so uh, kudos to everybody involved this could have been a situation where you let it spiral out of control but nobody let that happen and 88 wins last year was good enough for a division title we knew that wasn't going to be the case this year and here they are 101 <laughs> victories and they overcome a 10 and a half game deficit to take the East. Like you said, only eight days in first place, but they picked the right eight days to do it. Yeah, 101 and 60 so far with one game remaining today. Now they will play the winner of the Cardinals and Philly series. Who do you like better in terms of a matchup as far as the Braves advancing? Well, I'll say this, you know, there's the familiarity factor with Philadelphia. Uh, you know exactly what you're going to get. Uh, you see them so many times, 19 times a year. That said, it doesn't make it a whole lot easier knowing you'd have to face, you know, Nola, who's throwing it really well right now, and Wheeler, who's been doing it for the last few years for Philadelphia. So sort of pick your poison, right? A team that you know a lot about, but has a really good offense and can catch fire at any time. I'll say this about the Cardinals. I think there's still a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, memory lingering from what happened a few years ago in that series and st louis is always a tough matchup in the postseason when you've got uh, what what uh, you've seen pujols do this year and you know they're going to have the pitching and they're always going to be a pesky team they're not going to strike out a whole lot so if i have to pick one matchup that's a little more favorable probably philadelphia but it's not it's not a whole lot easier again with those two pitchers with wheeler and nola eflin if he can get back to where he is you know that offense can go off for crooked numbers at any time so if there was a more favorable matchup I would lean Philly, but, uh, you know, again, when you get to October, anything can happen. How do you think winning the World Series last year, Kevin, let this team just have an even keel approach all season long and will benefit them going into this postseason run? I think it was huge. And I think when you look at this roster, while you have a, a lot of young guys going through this for the first time, see Michael Harris and Vaughn Grissom and Spencer Strider, your young guys on this team, like Austin Riley, I talked to Austin about this last week. He's still 25 years old, but he's been to the playoffs every year since he's been up here. So, you know, the young guys are still so experienced in the playoffs. And I think that's really huge uh, to know what to expect when these games mean so much more, when the lights are brightest. Um, so at the end of the day, I think that the young guys in, in, that are doing this for the first time have not been overwhelmed by any of these scenarios. And the guys that have done it before, look, they took down a really good Brewers pitching staff last year. They took down the Dodgers, who've been their Achilles heel in the postseason all these years. You know that better than anybody. And then they went and, and you know beat the Houston Astros in six games, including winning it at their place last year. So I just think that all the postseason experience, uh, you can't replicate that. You can't just simulate that. And this team has been there and done that. So I think you know knowing what they accomplished a year ago, this team is very, very confident heading into the October baseball. You win the division, you get a break. You don't have to play in the wild card series. Will Spencer Strider be ready for the NLDS? That's the hope. That's the plan is that he should be able to go. Um, that oblique that caused him to go on the injured list and miss the last two weeks of the season does sound like he's starting to progress and the Braves are cautiously optimistic that he'll be ready to go for the division series. Nothing set in stone and we know obliques can linger longer than you hope, but I do think there's a lot of positivity that he should be able to go for the division series starting a week from yesterday. I've been around, Kevin, when people wanted to build a statue of Kenley Jansen in front of Dodger Stadium. I've also been around when they wanted him to get out of town as fast as possible. He has pitched really well down the stretch. He recorded or he pitched the final out of the game yesterday when Acuna brought in that final out to win the division. What has made him so effective at the right time? 
his cutter has been really good. And as you know, that's his bread and butter pitch. Uh, you know, after some bumps in the road, you know, in late August and early September, he's back to looking like Kenley Jansen. I mean, what he has done for this team, 41 saves, leads the National League. And, you know, it wasn't that long ago that I had callers on the postgame show ready to go in a different direction, go with Iglesias for the ninth inning. But Brian Snitker this year, very similar to what he did a year ago, sticking with Will Smith as the closer. He kept Kenley Jansen in that role. And Kenley, his last 11 appearances, one run, just a few base hits, 16 strikeouts. He's gotten the job done. So uh, the big thing for me with Kenley is there weren't a lot of clean innings earlier this season, but that has been a totally different story. So again, he you, you trust the back of the baseball card. This guy has done it in the playoffs year in and year out, and that's the reason they stuck with him. So the loyalty factor, once again, for Brian Snitker, looks like it's paid off for Kenley Jansen. Yeah, he was rewarded certainly a .82 earned run average. He has a 132 opponents average against. Kevin McAlpin, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. We will see you down the stretch. Thanks, Alana.